Gentleman yields back. Chair now recognizes gentleman from Texas, Mr. Olson, for five minutes. I thank the chair and welcome to all of our witnesses. My hometown is Houston, Texas. We have the world's largest petrochemical industry. We have the world's largest medical complex, the Texas Medical Center. We have America's number one exporting port, the Port of Houston. And we have a lot of brownfield sites all across our region. They are all over. Put that slide up, please. This is the best example of how a brownfield can work. This is smack dab in downtown Houston. It's an old railroad station, a dilapidated industrial facility with many, many, many corrugated metal buildings in complete decay. Next slide, please. Here's that brownfield today. That is the 42,000 seat Minute Maid ballpark. Is that a minor league park? No, sir. And my pro it's team. Not. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Chairman, is it General O'Neill? I, I want to comment. I, I appreciate that, and I want you to remind you the Astros won their opener last night. <laughs> I'll make comments about that. As you can see from my little placard here, according to Sports Illustrated, on June 30th of 2014, that stadium will be the home of the Baseball World Series champions, our Houston Astros. <laughs> and I'm proud to say, after yesterday, we're on track to win 162 games and have nobody score a run against us. Go Astros. <laughs> but to be a little serious, this was a true public-private partnership with private and lowercase letters in public, I'm sorry, private and uppercase letters, public and lowercase letters. EPA spent about $800,000 to have this brownfield taken made to Minute Maid Park. Houston, local Houston people, raised over $500 million. 800,000 versus 500 million. And so my question for the panel is, could you do these projects like Mid May Park without federal assistance? Mr. Anderson? Thank you. Often the, the real spur of, of, of development like that is that initial investment of cash. The developers look at these properties and they don't know whether they want to spend their own and they want to get before they own the property and allowing either the local government or the state government or the federal government to come in and actually do an assessment of that property, figure out how bad it is, put the yardstick up against it, is critical to you know, these projects. And you can see the leveraging. Thank you. Mr. Martineau. I'd second that. I think that's exactly right. The site assessment dollars by somebody as the as the city or the community investing those dollars so that they can attract maybe a myriad of pers prospective purchasers. Because if you don't know what the site's got, it's an old railroad site, and our gulch was the same thing, it old CSX sites. Why are you going to spend half a million dollars to do a site assessment to only find out it's way beyond the thing when you can go somewhere else and find a greenfield site? So that initial site assessment, it, it sort of, it, it, it gives the prospective buyers a, a sense of what the additional cost to use that facility as opposed to have something to have else. have federal that, don't you, it sounds like. Governor Glenn Denning, sir. Congressman, first of all, I agree entirely with your premise, and uh, you're exactly on target, and I appreciate that. But let me also add, if I might, the Baltimore Orioles uh, Stadium, which became the model for the modern uh, baseball stadium, used the exact same approach. It was a combination, it was brownfield, and right next to it now is the Ravens Stadium as well. And so I think what we ought to do is creatively, as the Baltimore Orioles uh, and the Houston Astros play in the World Series uh, for it, we can call this the Brownfields uh, Series <laughs> and put the publicity on this where it should be as the Orioles indeed, of course, go on to win. We have one problem. I love that, sir. But last couple of years ago, they moved us to the American League. So it has to be in the American League Championship Series. But I'd love to have your own. Well, you have to make more of an impact then. I, I, was, I forgot. <laughs> no, that. we're planning to. This <laughs> year, World Series champs. Right. Mayor Panto. In light of time, I would concur with all my colleagues as well. <laughs> and last year, Mayor Bo, Bo, I'm sorry. Bowage. Thank Bowage. you, Congressman. Uh, when we built the Jersey Gardens Mall on a 166 acre landfill, it was the same process. We used an assessment grant 
and the developers asked I to go to city council to build a road, which cost $10 million to get to the dump in order to get the heavy equipment in for remediation. So the public investment and that combination led to uh, about one five hundred million dollars of investment. As you guys know, that stadium did more than that stadium. We built the basketball team, the uh, big concert venue, Toyota Center, right across the street from that. A soccer stadium for our dash and our dynamos across the freeway from that. All new hotels, little parks out there. Downtown is thriving again. It was going to. All right, gentlemen's time. Gentlemen's time has expired. I'll